All right, just about set to go. And on the mound now, Joe Musgrove. But, Chris, he hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well, I'll say this. Every player wants to perform well at their home ballpark, in front of their fans, in front of the city. And you know this guy no different. He wants to be more effective here. So, you know, you look at the numbers. They haven't been great at home. I'm sure he wants to turn that around, and we'll see if he's able to start that in this one. All right, ready to go here. This is Willie Castro. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. And that's a leadoff double. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it, and that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. Jose Miranda, the next twin up to hit. That one hammered, but pulled foul. Man at second. Got him. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout, and there's one away. Well, oh, that's a curveball, and I'm sure he wants back in the plate. Two strikes, the sort of pitch you're hoping for. A bit of a mistake, and I'd say in a very hittable location, but clearly the break was enough to get him to swing through it. Here's Trevor Larnick. And the pitch. Runner takes off for third. The 1 1 is fouled off. Righty delivers. Just oh, misses down. with that one. It's a good take. in with that slider good two strike pitch right there at worst case scenario it's weak contact in play exactly where he and the catcher wanted it Ryan Jeffers at the plate a little bit high and it's two and one two ball one strike Runner at second, two down. And we're just getting started here in the top of the first. On the ground right side. And it goes just foul. Man on second, two down. And another ball. Matt Walmer. In the on-deck circle for the Twins. The pitch. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Payoff pitch. Comes up empty as he chases that one in the dirt. Gets to it on to first. That completes the strikeout inning over. Twins wind up stranding one. And now the Padres get their first opportunity in a scoreless ball game. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Back here at Petco Park and towing the slab, Pablo Lopez. What's the word on him? Well, coming into this game, hitters are batting under 250 against this starting pitcher. So it just shows you how effective he's been. He's been able to move his pitches around. Add and subtract, change up the look so that hitters don't get too comfortable and start squaring up the baseball. We'll see what he's got in this the one. We go to the bottom of the first. Luis Arise stands in. And a 1 1. And that's just foul. And Pablo Lopez will deliver. And a swing and a miss. One gone here. Here's the switch hitting left fielder Jerks and Pro. Way out front for strike two. One ball, two strikes.
One down, base is empty. Come on and miss. Struck him out. And the home first moving along quickly today. Two gone. Well, there appears to be no problem settling in on the mound out there today. It looks pretty tough to start this one, punching out the first two hitters in this ball game. And somebody's okay. going to have to put the bat on the ball, put it in play, and get something going. Two outs, base is empty. Ground ball up the middle. Castro on the run, throw to first. Padres go down one, two, three. Nothing doing there for the Friars. Scoreless after one. Back here in San Diego, now the left fielder, Matt Walmer. Matt Walmer. That one missed. Three one, and he couldn't come up with it. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. And now it's the switch hitter, Carlos Santana. Fastball for a strike. Walmart aboard here at first with nobody out. That just misses. Two balls, two strikes. Two balls. Eric Summersgill, our plate umpire. One thing to watch out for, Boog, is what side of the plate Summersgill might be favoring. He usually sets up at an angle. Pitchers sometimes will try to figure that out early so they can attack that spot and get as many strike calls as possible. Chris, do players ever change their approach in meaningful ways based on who's umpiring, or is it good to just be aware of now tendencies so you're not that surprised? I'd say the latter, because the pitcher's got to pitch to his strengths regardless. The hitter's got to hit to his strengths. So you're aware of it, but you have to just hunt for what you can handle. Well, a great back and forth and that at bat. He had to lay off some really close pitches, and somehow, well, he found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Here's Manuel Margot. And that one fouled off. Fouls it off, still one and two. And the right hander deals. Three. And a swing and a miss. And that is a big first out. He's locked in at the plate when he's right. using the whole field. He was out front there. Just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. Now batting Max Kepler. That one lifted to left. Profar has a beat on it. Squeezes it. And yeah, there's two away. Batting up. The, the second base. base. Kyle Farmer. So first and second with two outs. Kyle Farmer up to the plate now. Two on, two outs. Then a count one and two. Still in the second, already at 44 pitches, so some concern there. And oh. downstairs. Line to left, down the line, and it's foul. Two outs. We got a full count. Willie Castro. Next to bat for Minnesota. Three balls, two strikes to count. That ball is foul, and the pressure is building. The pitch. That one is absolutely belted. Back there. Out of here. 
He'll take a jog around the bases. And they take the lead. It's 3-0. Those are the at-bats that leave pitchers exhausted. He had to throw a lot of pitches and still gave up the long ball. That's a bad combo. That one was a hanger, and pitchers typically don't get away with making a mistake like that. And right there, he made him pay. Stepping in is the switch hitting shortstop, Willie Castro. Next hey. offering in yep. there for a strike. And now two and two. <laughs> And another ball. Fly ball, pretty well struck right field. Peralta raging back towards the wall. Banks off the wall. In safely with a double, his second of the day. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. He hit that ball really well to deep right field right there. Got a pitch to drive and just stayed through it nicely. Didn't quite have the trajectory to clear the fence, but you're always happy with an extra base hit. Jose Miranda, the next twin up to hit. The 1-1. One -one. Tapped softly on the ground. Machado throws to first in time. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. But the Twins get a three-run shot. It's now 3-0. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Bottom of the second. Here's the cleanup hitter for the Padres, Manny Machado. Manny Machado. The 2-1. Foul ball. The wind of the pitch. And that's off and the inside edge. Three and two now. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. Three. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Batty. 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 And here the comes Sander Bogarts. Sander. The 2-1. Bogarts. Swing and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. So a man aboard now with one away. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Other than ripping one into the gap or blasting one over the wall, there are a whole lot of hits that are more satisfying than a nice line drive in the center field. So that definitely felt good. Jackson Merrill at the plate now. His first career home run happened right here at Petco Park. Yeah, and he got the silent treatment from his teammates in the dugout, which is such a baseball thing. You don't see it anywhere else. Nothing like running through the dugout, pretending to high-five teammates who won't even look at you. Roll to short, could be two. Off-balance B, there's one. But no, safe at first, it's a fielder's choice. Batting seven. seven. The right, the right fielder. Field. James Man. Man at first, David Peralta at the play. And here it comes. Hey. Swing and a miss. Two. And that is strike two. One ball, two strikes. Move to first. Merrill hey. gets back easily. Left hand batter waits. That's ball Just two. missed. Merrill, two the ball. runner at first two with strike. two gone. Just missed. Looks like he thinks that should have been a strike at the top of the zone, but doesn't seem to be too upset. That's just a case where I think he's trying to get a better feel for the umpire strike zone and what he's going to be calling. That's just a part of pitching. To the right side. Throw on to he's Santana. Up. Out with room to spare, and that's the inning. One left for San Diego. They trail in this one, 3 nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. Top half of the third inning. Leading off, Trevor Larning. Left-hand hitter waits. Can't glove it cleanly. But the throw to first gets him easily. And that's the first out. 
Now back. The catcher. Ryan. Jeffers. And now the catcher comes up to him. Ryan Jeffers. One out, base is empty. And another ball. Fouled off left side. The pitch. Caught him looking for the K. Well, just excellent location on that inside fastball. Really locked him up. And it's a hitter. It's not typically what you're looking for. You're trying to protect away and then in. So you can be a little bit tardy with two strikes. Hard to tell if he was fooled or if he thought it would be called a ball. But either way, that's a really nice pitch. It's the call. And the count is two and two. Well, Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. 2-2 two, two down. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. And a base hit into right. And that keeps the inning alive. The bat. The, the first base is Carlos Santana. So digging in, Carlos Santana. Ball two. This one in the dirt, and the runner stays where he is. 2-2 two -two now. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Flew open a little bit with that front shoulder, but was able to slow his bat down just enough to make contact with that pitch. Keep the bat alive. Good battle here. About to be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Swing and a pop-up. Kim settles under it. And that is that. One left for Minnesota, but they lead it 3 nothing. And we're back. We Bottom of the go. inning. Go. Now it's the shortstop. Hassan Kim. the other way that's a base hit and the leadoff man aboard anytime you rip a line drive the other way you feel really good about what you did at the plate you trusted your hands you let the ball travel and you took the barrel straight to it that's great work right there and now Kyle oh, Higashioka Rudder at first with no outs here. That That's one misses. And a count is three and one. Well, knowing that this hitter's got holes in his swing, because he's got so much power, pitcher still can get a little too tight, afraid to make a mistake. And a pitch. Gets a piece and stays alive. Kim round second on his way to third coming home now a relay to the plate but it's off line and now just a two run deficit well done drives in the run put a really nice balanced swing on it and when you can rope one into the gap like that you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box and he'll feel real good about that one so the San Diego batting order turns over Next for the Padres, Luis Arias. 
Pitch That's misses there, and a count two and one. You know, these Padres do a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way, and I'm seeing very patient at bats out of him. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there, and that might be the best news yet for this offense. Makes the catch. Rounder tags it second. In there safely. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. Now batting Jerickson Pro Four. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. Kicks and deals. That one the other way. This looks like extra bases. In comes the run from third. It's 3-2. Fires the second too late. And he's got a double. Well, back within one as he brings home the run. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Now here's Jake Cronenworth. And there's the strike. Kicks and fires. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Here's Manny Machado now. When you talk about a neat defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Man at second. On the ground to third. Sends it across the first. Machado is out. Inning over, and it could have been worse. They get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. On to inning number four. It's the Twins three and the Padres two. Back here in San Diego, John Chompy with Chris Singleton, and set to lead off the fourth, Manuel Margot. Manuel Margot. And he deals. That one at the knees for a strike. Activity in the bullpen for San Diego. Martin Perez, the lefty, looks to be getting himself ready. Righty to the plate. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. The rise makes the grab one down. Boy, that was a hanging breaking ball right there. I think he tried to no, do a no, little no. bit too much. The Sometimes right those eyes can get really no, big. No. I think his no, swing no. broke down as well, and that's what caused him to pop it up. Max Kepler at the plate. Now fly ball to right center. On his way over. Nabs it. Out number two. Now no, no. the second base. High aisle. Kyle Farmer, the next twin up to hit. And that one in the air center field. Merrill makes the grab on the run. here at Petco Park. Here for the Bottom four. Party. So digging in now for San team. Diego. Xander Ten Bogarts. Bogarts. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. Makes the catch and there's one gone. Here's the center fielder. Jackson Merrill. Home team down a run. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. And that one sliced foul. A one two. Inside and it hit him. He had two strikes on him and he hit him. Runner on at first with one gone. Now it's the right fielder, David Peralta.
and a pitch. Hard hit, could be extra bases. Makes the turn at second, heads for third. Coming home. He scores to tie it up. It's 3-0. Well, we're starting over again, all tied up. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy, didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep, took the ball right to it, and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. One out, runner at second. Stepping in for San Diego, Hassan Kim. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Fights that one away. Still one and two. Peralta over at second. One down. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball. And the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. And there's a ball. And he hits a ground ball right side. Throw on to Santana. That was a strong at bat, even though he couldn't find a way on base. But not a bad outcome in that Let's spot. Get, the runner moves up to third, and now they have a chance you to drive in the go ahead run. run. It's not a knock, but at the end of the day, it's a good at bat. Here's the power hitting catcher, Kyle Higashioka. Two outs. Next pitch in for a strike, and the count is one and two. And another ball. Two two. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Sometimes he wears the emotion on the sleeve, but that's okay as long as he's getting results. And right there, thrilled with the punch out to get out of a jam. Start the fifth, Martin Perez. And as relievers go, he's not a big strikeout guy. He tries to force weak contact, so command and execution are huge for him. So digging in, Willie Castro. The pitcher, Willie Castro. Swings and misses and one down below the zone. This guy's got good such friend. a good sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. Here's a high chopper. Now the throw to first on the run. Good. Save! It was a healthy cut, but the same can't be said for the contact. He got just enough of the ball to put it in play, and that's all he needed. Tough play for the defense on what was kind of a swinging bunt. So up next, Jose Miranda. That two one not close. And a count two and one. And a pitch. That one the other way. To second, there's one. Relay to first double play. I think four, six, three double plays like that are way tougher than these guys make it look sometimes because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play, but right there, very well done. Next is the designated hitter, Trevor Larnick. Yeah. Swing and a miss. One ball, and a count, one and two. two Two down, nobody on. Foul ball still, a one and two count. The wind of the pitch. And ball another ball. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. Goes down looking. Halfway home, tied at three. Go for the last.
last half of the inning. Up now the Padre leadoff man Luis Arias. The pitch. Swings through the fastball up in the zone. Minnesota's bullpen with some action. Bailey over the young right-hander up and throwing. Here comes a pitch. Two ball, two strike. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Two two now. I can't pull. Swing and a miss. Got him to go up the ladder for the K. Profar climbs in on that left side. All tied up. Last half of inning number five. Fouled off. He was late. Down base is empty. Bounce that off to the left and we'll do it again. The one two. That one just misses. Still just the second batter of the inning and on the mound he's already thrown 13 pitches. They've got him working hard out there. Got him swinging. Picks up strikeout number seven. Tasked with one, two, and three to start this inning, but no trouble so far. I'm sure he'd love to strike out the side here. Make a mistake, but you got to be composed in this spot. Focus on getting this next guy. You got two good outs. Want to get the third one and avoid the middle of that lineup coming up with a base runner. Could become dangerous. Next offering in there for a strike. One ball. And the count one two and two. A wind in the pitch. And they'll do it again. And the righty deals. Three. Struck him out looking. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. set for the top of the sixth and here's the catcher Brian Jeffers you know the first manager to ever win a game here at Petco Park was Tony Gwynn yes Tony Gwynn they had a college baseball tournament here in March 2004 and Tony managed San Diego State to a win. activity in the bullpen Jeremiah Estrada up and loosening in the pen Scott getting loose as well And now the lefty. And that one hit to first. And it's off the bag. Rose to second. In safely with a leadoff double. Go ahead runs in scoring position. Even though he was really late on it, he clearly barreled the ball because that one was ripped down the line. He had to be really short with that swing and not get beat by that pitch. A chance now to take the lead. And at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. Go ahead, run on base. And next for Minnesota, Matt Walmer. Fly ball down the line. Profar has a beat on it. Brings it in. And there's one away. Next to switch hitting first baseman, Carlos Santana. With the go-ahead run standing at second. And we're in the top half of the sixth. He's gone off speed. He needs to elevate here with two strikes out of the zone. 
at the belt and fires. That one misses, and the count is even two and two. Popped up first base side. And no one could get to it. It's a foul ball. Man, it's second. Right side, hard hit. Steps on first for the out. That's a good piece of hitting right there. The job was to move the runner up and give your team a chance to score the go-ahead run. That's exactly what happened. So you better believe your teammates are happy with you after that at bat. Two outs. And a one and two. Get a little frustrated with the strike zone. Next oh, offering is downstairs. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. That one back up the middle and it gets through. In to score from third. It's 4-3. His confidence level is so high. Really nice job of coming through in a big spot. Once you get the ball by the pitcher, there's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. So two down, Max Kepler the next to hit. That one off the mark, two and one. Margo off of first with two away. This one in the air right field. Peralta under it. And he makes the catch. And that is that. But the RBI single pushes across a run. It's now a 4-3 ball game. You're dialed in two. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound. Bailey over. Now, Still a lot of game left, and Number this game could go either way. So this is a big opportunity for him to get some important outs and try to help carry this lead into the later innings. And a pitch. Action in the pen down there. Caleb Fielder. Warming up for manager Rocco Baldelli. Just miss. That one called just inside, I think, and on the mound, he's trying to get a little bit of an explanation. Doesn't seem to be too bothered by it, though, but he clearly thought it clipped the corner. The pitch. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Margot in pursuit. He's got it. One up, one down. Every day during batting okay. practice, these okay. outfielders get okay. about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. It's Xander Bogarts now. The line to kick the pitch. Right through there for a strike. Well, that's really the money spot. Down and away, if you can locate that consistently, it's going to be real tall for hitters to square that up. That's what you love to see relievers do coming out of that bullpen. Next okay. offering upstairs. Base is empty one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. Throw to first, Bogart dives back. I think you want to get a one-way lead, be very aggressive in the secondary. This hitter not a power guy, so you want to make sure that you can get some length on the secondary lead and perhaps score the ball in the gap. The pitch. Hits and misses. It's a strikeout. 
stepping in, David Peralta. Now that the white field. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. The pitch. Wouldn't that chase that Walter. time. Now move to first. No, Bogarts back easily. Right-handed reliever. That oh, one misses. And now three and one. Ha Sung Kim hitting on deck circle. The three one. Nice curveball for a strike. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score. Swing and a high fly ball down the right field line. Kepler sizes this one up and makes the grab. That is the inning. So no runs, no base hits, no errors, and a runner left. We're through six full. It's the Twins four and the Padres three. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Jeremiah Estrada. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. Well, one run game. Now it's the second baseman, Kyle Farmer. Here's a 1 1. Now one miss. Next offering is in for a strike. The backdoor slider is such a devastating pitch. You don't want to get beat by the inside fastball, so you cheat a little bit, and then by the time it gets there, it's out of the swing play. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Blew the express right by his bat for strike three. I love to see guys compete, and I know he's frustrated that he wasn't able to do anything with that pitch. You see it so well, but you have to respect the upper 90s velocity. And it is hard to catch up to. And now for the Twins, Willie Castro. One down, base is empty. And he's winning a miss. One ball, two frames. Right hander kicks deals. On the ground. And foul ball. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's two away. Very strong coming out of the pin so far as he punches out the first two batters he's faced in this one. Getting straight to work. Man, it's talked about a lot. The relievers are just so electric these days. These aren't fun at bats if you're a hitter. I'm so glad I'm retired. So two down now. And here is Jose Miranda. Righty delivers. That one misses. And it's two and one. There's a strike. Three two now. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Kicks and fires. In the air left field. Pro far. Has a beat on it, and that'll do it. We're back in a new picture here to start the bottom of the seventh. Caleb Fieldball. This softball's been really good against left handed hitters. Number 56. And the batter will be the shortstop, Hassan Kim. 
That's your stop. Looking to get the tying run on base. Bounding ball here. Rolls foul. The one two. Way inside. The two two on the way. And a swing and a miss. And one gone. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an oh, inning like this. When you got the leadoff hitter, it's so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. Kyle Higashioka, the next up for the Padres. And here it comes. Well, that's in fact. Ground ball right side, and that one finds its way through. That play looks routine defensively, but with all of the hurt, it can get real tricky Ooh. down in the corner. Kept it to a long single, nice defensive play. So the lineup flips over. Luis arrives now at the plate. In the air, left field. He's under it. Drops into the glove. And there's two away. Now batter. No left fielder. Jerickson. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder. Jerickson Profar. Holding on to a one-run lead here at the bottom of the seventh. That one way outside, two and one. Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around to score and tie this ball game up. Next offering upstairs. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. And now the count is full. And another power hitter lurking in the on-deck circle. Up the middle, Castro. In plenty of time to first. Profar is out. That's the third out. Inning over. Padres leave one. Still down a run. It's 4-3. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Number Tanner Scott. And he's done a great job keeping the ball in the park this year. The numbers stack up with some of the best in the game. Trevor Larnick digs in now. A little surprised. We don't see a pinch hitter here with the lefty-lefty matchup. Kicks and deals. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. pitch Hanks and misses it's a strikeout third time he struck out in this one and definitely an individual performance you want to flush he just hasn't looked very comfortable up there just one of those days but when you're still winning the ball game at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that w ryan jeffers the next twin up to hit here comes a pitch they say you win. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch. Bounce it off, still one and two. Well, he gave up on that pitch early, and it ended up staying in the zone. I'm sure he's kicking himself and would like that pitch again. Got it by a 
that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Hitters become defensive, and all of a sudden that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strike. Two down, nobody on. And we're in the top of the eighth. Hit pretty well in the air out to center. Merrill settles underneath it. He's there. He's got it. And that'll do it. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Griffin Jacks. Now, well, the really best good. relievers love the opportunity no, to come in and protect the tight really lead good. late in the ball game. Yeah. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Way to go. Jake Cronin well getting ready to hit. Yeah. 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 Two two now. Yeah. And another ball. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down on any leadoff base runner really makes this inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just trying to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. And now it's Manny Machado. And that one fouled off. Trying to hold a one run lead here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Fights that one away, still one and two. Inside, just missed. Boog, he never moved because he never had time to. With that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. Hit on the ground to the right side. And that one handled. And that quickly two away. Well, he didn't recognize change up earlier enough. Got out in front a little bit. Rolled over on it and beat it into the ground. Now here's Xander Bogarts now. Very solid inning on the mound so far here in the eighth. Holding on to this narrow lead. This is exactly what they were looking for. In the air, center field. Margot settles under it. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, number 25. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. And now for the Twins, Carlos Santana. The first base is Carlos Santana. The 1-1. One -one. And Good another one. ball. Just nope. off the inside that. edge. And yeah, there's ball, ball four. four. Take your base. Oh, you know this guy wants to swing it, but he's showing some good patience in this one. It's the, the second time he's taken ball four. So a man aboard. Manuel Margot up to the plate. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. Puts a bunt down. Arise. No look flip to first. On target. He got it. Nice play. Really nice technique right there to get that sack bunt down. Advances that runner up another base. That was his job. He got it done. And now the right fielder, Max Kepler.
Left hand hitter waits. That one ripped right center field. And that should be extra bases. They get some insurance as the runner scores from second. It's 5 3. Not in time. He's safe. Puts a run on the board and picks up an RBI. Just a beautiful triple from start to finish. Got a pitch he could drive, turned on it, and hammered it out front into the gap. Right out of the box. I love how he was hustling. And I think he knew he was going for three as soon as it touched down. Here's the second baseman, Kyle Farmer, and he had a big swing of the bat early on in the ball game. Yep, a three-run rocket back in the second. Even though it was early, a big homer like that can be tough to come back from when you're on the other end of that thing. I mean, it's tough. Sets up an uphill battle the rest of the way. And another ball. Movement in the bullpen. Jason Adam up and throwing. And a pitch. And ball That's four right. to ball a board. Ball. Here's a sack fly situation, and he's got to make sure he gets the ball out over the up plate up and get those arms up. extended. They're the trying to crowd him with the infield really in. It's be a big pickoff if he can push a run across. Now here is Willie Castro. Two on, one out. On the ground, could be two. Kim on to Bogarts. Throw to first, but he beat it. I promise you they're guys that get a little bit faster when they can smell an RBI. That was a possible inning ending double play. Great hustle, and he gets rewarded with the RBI because of that. And now here is Jose Miranda. Here comes the pitch. Runner breaks for a second. There's a ball. Throw is low, and he can't pick it. That one well upstairs. And that's ball three. Castro on its second with two down. The right hander gives up the two out walk. Maybe a little loss of focus on the mound right there. Pretty much gifted in first base with a quick free pass. So the Padres with a new arm in the mound. Adrian Morahone. Well, he's a big time strikeout guy out there. This season averaging more than one per inning. First and second, two down. And now the Minnesota designated hitter, Trevor Larnick. And now the lefty down the line. And that drops foul. The Twins trying to break this one open here at the top of the ninth. Foul ball still a one and two count. And a pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. They put two on the board on one base hit. No errors, but two are left stranded. Six, seven, eight scheduled to start the bottom of the ninth. It's the twin six and the Padres three. We're back, and on the mound is the closer, Yoan Duran. Now he's having a ton of success facing left-handed hitters this season, so this seems like a smart move to turn to him with a lefty at the plate. So digging in now for San Diego, Jackson Merrill. The center fielder, Jackson Merrill. Struck him out swinging. 
The high heat, too much on that one. Well, the first batter, it's oh, always yeah. a big one for the no closer. Way. I mean, you get that punch yeah. out, you get settled in, you feel like you're in command out there on the mound from the jump, and kind of prevents any doubt from creeping into your mind or the fielders that are playing behind you that, you know, you're going to wrap this thing up. Base is empty one away here in the last half of inning number nine. 